There is nothing that I have found. I mean, I don't do any drugs. You don't need that. There is nothing that I have found that gives me more energy, that forces energy through my body, into my body than I feel like I can run through a freaking wall. Today, we're gonna to be talking about five different keys to have more energy. I think in my personal opinion, this is my opinion, so I'm just gonna tell you what I think. I think that one of the most important things in your entire life is your energy. When you look at it, we're 99.999% energy anyways. So shouldn't we focus on that more than anything else, the energy that we have? Because think about this. If you want to create an amazing life and you have this big dream and you have these goals and you've written out your goals and everything, it's just, you're doing it. It's, it feels good. You've got it all figured out. But then you wake up in the morning and you don't have the energy to actually take action. What happens? Not a whole lot. And so in order to get things done, you have to have energy, mental energy, physical energy, spiritual, emotional energy, all of these energies behind to get you to move in that direction. So one of the most important things that you should be focusing on every single day is your energy throughout the day. One of the things that I focus on more than anything else throughout the day is my energy throughout the day. And so I'm gonna give you a couple of keys to help you have more energy throughout your day. So I'm gonna give you five keys. Number one, tip number one, it is very rare that you can walk into my house and not have music playing. I am a firm believer in music and how it motivates, inspires, and moves people, and especially me. And so one of the things that I talk about is the music that you listen to. What are the, what's the music like that you're listening to? I notice sometimes that we will, uh, in my house, we put on, uh, Lauren and I meditate on the couch together. And what we'll do is we'll put on a YouTube video that has literally just like three hours of meditation music and we'll meditate until we just decide that we're done meditating. And sometimes what we'll do, this literally happened today, I realized it, is then we'll go about our business for the day, we'll start getting ready, we'll make some breakfast, all that stuff. And it will continue to play because we left it on. And then I walked into the kitchen earlier and I was like, oh man, like, you know, I kind of feel, kind of feel a little bit tired. And I was like, oh, cause that freaking music is still playing. Like the, there was no motivating music moving me around. And so usually what I'll do is I'll change my music throughout the day, depending on how I want my energy to be throughout the day. Music is energy. Music is sound and vibration. You know, that it's, it's literally what we're made of. Energy, sound, vibration, all of that is literally the human organism. And so when you think about the music that you listen to, if you don't have a whole lot of energy, are you sitting in silence? Now, that's not a bad thing to sit in silence, depending on what you want. But if I have something like guaranteed, when I'm about to go into the, the gym, I'm about to go into our garage and work out, I switch the energy in the house about 30 minutes before. It's not slow music, it's not chill, it's not acoustic, it turns into EDM inside of the house. And I start bumping the music because I want to start getting my energy up. And so you gotta ask yourself, your energy is down, what's the music like? Are you listening to music? Are you playing music? Can you put music on that is going to move you more? Can you put on a song that makes you wanna dance? Also, another way to think about it as well, is what are the words that are being used inside of this, this music that you're listening to? Have you ever thought of that before? Like, what are the people saying? Are they saying good things that you're repeating out loud? Because words are affirmations, music is affirmations as well. So if you're saying lyrics, are those lyrics that you believe in? Or are you listening to some music that's saying stuff where you would never say that, you know, to somebody on the street? Like, would you repeat to somebody what some of the lyrics that you're listening to are? There's been some songs I've listened to over my life where I've been like, oh, I should probably should have listened to those lyrics a long time ago and actually paid attention to what I'm saying because I am actually affirming stuff that I don't believe in outside of my body from the words that I use. So think about the energy behind the, the music that you listen to and also think about the words that is in the music as well. Next thing I wanna talk about is the people that you spend time with. The people that you spend time with can usually be one of two things, batteries or black holes. Batteries are black holes. Let me tell you what I mean by that. A person that is a battery is someone that you're around. And what does a battery do? It gives energy. It gives energy. You know, the battery that's in the, the video camera that's recording this. It's giving energy so that the thing can obviously be on. So when you think about that, who are the people that are the batteries in your life? You're around them and you're like, Shit. I'm so motivated every time I hang out with John. I'm so motivated every single time. When I get done with a great conversation with Stacy, like I feel amazing. Like, are there people like that in your life? And if there's not, or if there's not as many as you want, can you start to look for them and bring more into your life? People that are batteries, that make you feel good, that are like, hell yes, I'm inspired. Being around this person, going and getting coffee with them for 45 minutes changes the entire course of my day. 
Do you have people like that? If you do, how often are you talking to them throughout the day? One of the things that I think is super important is the power of community. You know, I, I talk about it every once in a while, but I have a community where I literally teach people how to grow online coaching businesses. It's called Business Breakthrough. And there's a Facebook group and everybody who's ever joined Business Breakthrough is in that Facebook group. And so people are able to be around other people that are succeeding, that are pushing themselves, that want something better for themselves. There's people that are friends from all over the world. They create friends from all over the world. They meet each other, they do Zoom calls. They meet up with each other, sometimes in person because some of them live in the same local area. Those people end up being batteries for each other and they motivate each other to do more, to be more, to get more out of their life. Do you have something like that? If not, can you bring more people like that into your life? Those are batteries. Now let's talk about black holes. Black holes are the ones that just exactly like a black hole. They just suck you in and your energy is completely gone. There's some people that are batteries that you can spend 20 minutes with and you are freaking fired up after you you hang out with them. There are other people where you can spend 20 minutes with them and it feels like 20 hours. And then after at minute 21, you're like, oh my God, I, there's the person's just, their energy is so low. They bring me down. They make me feel like shit. that person is literally sucking the good energy out of your body. So can you spend less time, <clears throat> no time with black holes and more time with batteries, people that inspire you to be better, people that push you to be better, people that want the best for you because you either hang out with batteries or you hang out with black holes. Can you start to categorize people in your life and hang out with the people who motivate you that are the batteries and not the people that demotivate you and talk negatively and talk about why you know they're still broke and they're not successful and then woe is me and the world does this to me and then blah, 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 blah. Stop. You don't need that. So that's the second, second thing as far as your energy goes is the people that you spend the most time with. The third thing is the information that you consume. You know how I feel about the news. If you've been listening to me for long enough, you know how I feel about the news and it's not good. I don't like the news. I don't watch it. It doesn't ever come into my awareness, but sometimes I happen to go to places where the news is playing and I can tell a energy shift in my body based off of that. So I'm not just talking about the news though. There's all of the information that you consume. So you have to start to think about, you know, there's good information, there's bad information, there's uh, information and things that come into your awareness in your brain that make you feel better. And there's things that come into your awareness in your brain that make you feel worse. So can you start to be very intentional about brainwashing yourself with the information that you want that makes you feel better, that gives you more energy? You know, if you're driving right now, hopefully this podcast is something that gives you energy. Can you listen to more stuff like this, whether it's my podcast or somebody else's podcast that motivates you? You can go onto YouTube and you can actually watch motivational speeches or you can watch someone that, that, that inspires you on YouTube and you can find, uh, you can listen to Audible. You can find ways to consume information so that every moment of your day is geared towards inspiration and you get your inspiration from the content you consume and completely stay away from the things that drain your energy that don't make you feel good. Because the information that you consume is going to make you feel good or it's going to make you feel bad. But the beautiful thing about it is that same way where you get to choose who you hang out with, you also get to choose the information that you consume as well. And so it's about being intentional with that. It's also about realizing who you're friends with on Facebook and Instagram. That, that information is consumed as well. If you've been listening to the podcast the past few weeks, I've been bragging about all of the people that I've unfriended. I'm not trying to really brag. I'm trying to literally tell you how I've done this in my life as well. I've noticed that I will see somebody's 15 second Instagram story and be like, I don't feel good after watching this. And I was like, I, I noticed it happening over and over and over again, especially in the you know past 18 months, two years of just things that have been happening. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna stop following this person. I'm gonna stop following that person. I have people in my family that I've started unfollowing. I have people I've been friends with for a long time that I've unfollowed. I've defriended people. I defriended over 3000 people on Facebook. Cause I was like, you know what? I'm gonna curate the information that I want coming into my brain. And it's not like coming from a place of like, I'm going to pigeonhole myself and only see what I believe in, but it is me protecting my energy. It's me protecting my mental energy, my spiritual energy, my emotional energy, physical energy, me protecting all of that energy because I only have a finite amount of it every single day. And so I'm trying to protect it with giving myself the information that I want, that I know is going to push me into creating the future that I want. So be very, very careful with the information that you're consuming. The next thing, number four, is the food that you eat. So when we're talking about information that you're consuming, think about the food that you're consuming as well. Some people listening to me right now, if you were to just change your diet, your energy would be completely different. 
If you were to change your diet, your energy would be vastly, like I'm talking crazy amounts different because you're eating food that is literally taking energy from you. The most energy consuming thing that your body does is digestion. If you're feeding yourself stuff that takes a lot to digest, no wonder why you're so freaking tired after lunch is because you're not eating food that's really great to have for lunch. And so can you pay attention to what you eat when you eat? Here's another really important thing as well to think about is if you have the time and the money to do so, go to a doctor and get a blood panel done and see if you might be nutrient deficient or vitamin deficient in any sort of way. This was something that was crazy for me to find out, but I went to a doctor and we did like this, this panel. It wasn't cheap, but you know, it was worth it to me. And I'll tell you why that is, is we did a panel and it came back with like hundreds of things. They literally test me for every single possible thing that you could test for. And everything came back amazing, except for there were two things that I was, I was deficient in that I needed to fix. One of them was like vitamin B3, I think it was. There was a couple of vitamin Bs. There was like a bunch of them, I guess. But there was a couple of them that I didn't have. And one of them was vitamin D I was deficient in as well. And so he was like, okay. Oh, and uh, a couple of aminos. And so he's like, all right, I'm going to give you this vitamin B. I'm going to give you this vitamin D. And I'm going to give you uh, these aminos. He's like, take them every single morning. It's like, all right, cool. I literally took them. And within two days, I was like, holy sh! I didn't know I could have this much energy at 35 years old. I just thought that I was just getting older. And I was like, yeah, you know, hear people like, oh yeah, you get old, you lift some energy and stuff. I was like, I haven't felt this good in like a long, long time. Why? Simply because I was able to not only find out what I was deficient in, but I was also able to get like high quality version of it. Like I didn't go and buy it on Amazon. I bought it specifically from this guy who's like, obsessed with nutrients and obsessed with vitamins and figuring out what the best ones are, got them from them. And I was like, I don't remember the last time I've had this much energy first thing in the morning. I was like, I don't even know if I need coffee. And in fact, I have so much energy that when I drink coffee, sometimes it stresses me out because it's too much energy. And so you just got to think to yourself about the stuff that you consume, the food that you consume, the water that you consume, you know, you're drinking from the faucet. Are you going through some, some crappy filter? You know, can you start to get water delivered to your house that's spring water that has minerals inside of it? All of these things that you consume all change the way that you feel throughout the day. So think about the food that you eat. And if you can, go and get a blood panel done. Look at all of the vitamins you possibly can. See if you're deficient. Fix it. And I guarantee it'll help you with that as well. And then last but not least, as far as energy goes, if you're trying to give more, get more energy throughout the day, force movement every single day. What do I mean by that? Force yourself to get up. And I don't mean force is like, oh my God, I've got to do it. And you've got to force yourself is like a pissed off version of it. But it's like, hey, I am dedicated to moving every single day. The beautiful thing about the body is that a lot of people think they don't have energy, but in reality, they haven't been using their energy sources. And so if you work out every single day, for instance, your body will start to create more energy throughout the day. And so if you just tell yourself, I'm going to move, I'm going to move, I'm going to move. I'm not going to sit around. I'm not going to not do something. I'm not going to be lazy anymore. I'm going to make myself move. Your body will start to create more energy every single day. And if you notice that you have low energy for the day, I don't care what it is, make yourself move, make yourself do it, get up, move, do 50 jumping jacks, do hundred pushups, do 75 squats, whatever it is, get your heart rate up. And what's really interesting is once you start to get your heart rate up, you can start to notice that your body and the way that you feel is going to change as well. And going along with that, I'm going to go ahead and give you bonus tip number six because you've been sticking around for the, the, the episode. Bonus tip number six is when you feel like you don't have energy throughout the day and you're just calling for an SOS, you know what you need to do? Get a cold shower and get your naked ass in that cold shower. Why? Because if you're in the cold shower, I'm not going to tell you all the scientific reasons. You can listen to the scientists talk about that. There is nothing that I have found. I mean, I don't do any drugs, chug coffee maybe. There is nothing that I have found that gives me more energy, that forces energy through my body into my body than jumping into cold water and being there for a couple minutes. So, you know, I have a cold plunge inside of my garage. When I'm like, when I feel like I'm dragging ass sometimes throughout the day, you know, I work from home. So luckily I can do this. If you work from home or if you're able to do this, try it out. You can do it in a cold shower. I do it inside of a cold plunge pool. It's literally set at 45 degrees at all points in time. It is not easy. It is semi-torturous every single time that I do it. But every time that I get out after about three, four, five minutes in it, I feel like I can run through a freaking wall. It's like my body just somehow created all of this energy. And so when I feel like I'm dragging ass, I'll hop in that. I feel like a completely different person as soon as I hop out of it. So if you work from home or you're at home and you feel like you're dragging ass, you feel like you want to get some more energy, go into a cold shower, put your timer on for three minutes. Do not let yourself get out for three minutes or just 
put on your favorite song. Let's take tip number one. Put on your favorite song that makes you move, jump, dance, move, whatever it is you got to do. You put on the cold shower and you do not get out of that shower until the song is over. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. We have mastered the art of distraction. So why is it hard to focus? Because you're a freaking professional of distraction to yourself.